Hey guys. Today I wanted to update you guys on how all of my plants and self-watering pots are doing. I think I tried self-watering pots for the first time about a year ago. Since then I have a lot more plants and self-watering pots, so today I'm going to show you all of them. So let's get into it. I'm like, should I start with the plants that are doing good in the self-watering pots or the ones that are doing bad? Well, I wouldn't say bad, but my Cebu Blue Pothos that I planted up a while ago, I think I planted them too deep down into the pots. This Cebu Blue Pothos right here, it's not that good of an example of a bad one because I have ones that look worse than this. But Cebu Blue Pothos right here, it looks a little bit worse than the first one. And we potted these all up at the same time, so I'm a little confused as to why they're all growing different. You can see in the pot, it looks like the new leaves are struggling to come out of the substrate. So like I said, they were definitely planted too deep in the pot. What should I do with these though? Should I just propagate them? I feel like the root systems are pretty good. That's a decent root system and that little white root over there, that's a nice healthy guy. I might just leave it alone and see what they do. They might need more light, more humidity. I'm not sure, but if you have any suggestions, please let your girl know. There's also this one. So all three of those, in my opinion, are not doing as well. You guys know I have a big mother plant of my Cebu Blue Pothos. So just seeing how that one grows, these ones are not growing properly. They could actually have spider mites though. You wanna know what's so crazy? I thought I was failing at my Alocasia Jacqueline again because it started yellowing and it already lost two leaves. There were spider mites all over the bottoms of the leaves. So I cut two of them off that were yellowing. Now it has two leaves which I'm really sad about, and they're kind of yellow. I should show you guys, why not? This is my Alocasia Jacqueline. This is the newest leaf that came out. It's gorgeous, but it's definitely yellowing a little bit. And then this leaf right here is an older leaf. It's definitely yellowing a little bit too. I do have some insecticidal soap that I've been spraying it with, but I don't know. A lot of big white roots came out from the top where I topped it with fluval. And those just weren't going down into the pot. They were literally coming out of the pot, which obviously wasn't good. So I put it in this wider pot, which is the only other size that I had. Half of fluval. Let me show you guys what the substrate's looking like. I'm kind of scared because I feel like I need something. Hold on. I just want to show you guys the substrate because she's half like a half pond topped with fluval. Because that's how I got those big juicy white roots to come out, but she was in a pot just like this, but like maybe two times smaller. So the roots were literally popping off the top. And there was no more room for any more substrate on the top. So this is what we're working with. I really hope she doesn't die because I really love this Alocasia Jacqueline and I really want to have one in my collection. So please send her prayers. If you guys have an Alocasia Jacqueline that's actually- I'm gonna have to put a stick in here or something because she's definitely leaning over. Figure that out later. Oh my god, this is why I don't touch this plant a lot. Let's get out of here. Back to- oh, she's in a self-watering pot too, so I guess it was good that I showed you. But back to our regular schedule program. Okay, sticking with the same type of pots, these ones, which I'm gonna have to clean. I think I showed you guys- the last time I showed you guys these pots, they were all cleaned out because I had just cleaned them. But this is how disgusting and dirty they can get. All that little debris in there to me is bugs. Which is probably not bugs, but, you know, paranoid. The foliage is coming out good though. This is my, what is this? This is a golden pothos. This is a golden pothos and skin dapsis mix. Look at how big this leaf is that came out. I really like this little mixture, even though my golden pothos is just not golden anymore in this plant at all. I started propagating golden pothos and putting them with props that I have a hard time propagating. And I swear it's working wonders. So that's why I'll always have a golden pothos in my collection mixed with another plant. Hopefully we get some larger leaves on here. I really think I need to up the humidity in my apartment because I just don't. And I think that's causing an issue, especially with the spider mice because they love the dry environment. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to take the humidifier out today. Look at how gorgeous this one is. Oh, I didn't even show you the root system on the other one. I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry. There she goes. My question is, how am I going to get these out? When I show you the bigger plants in the bigger self-watering pots... <laughs> but anyways, look at how gorgeous this is. This is another Skin Dapsis Pothos Mix. Are there any... Oh! Camera's overheating. But I'm back. Quick before we jump back into self-watering pots, guys. Look at my Philodendron El Chaco Red. I'm trying not to tip. Oh my god, it's going to tip. Hold on. Look at how gorgeous this is. 
I mean, they all look the same when they come out, but I'm always just so shocked. This one's not crusty at all, though. I'm really happy about that. No crusty spots. She's doing, this plant is doing so good since I transferred her to Fool, Fool, <laughs> Fluval, Fluval. And I'm just so excited I did. I think the next video I want to film is me putting plants on moss poles. I might just do a short though because I feel like that's not anything, you know what I mean? I don't know, I might film a short. I might film a short of me putting a bunch of plants on moss poles because I feel like that's kind of boring. Is it not boring? I don't know. I finally ran out of Dynagro, so I've just been watering my plants with CalMag and Super Thrive, which I don't know if that's good or not, but yeah, she's definitely going on a moss pole soon so I can train her up that way. I want to put a lot of my philodendron that I restarted on moss poles, and I feel like I'm going to get really huge leaves, but we'll see. My skin dabs is Pothos Mix, this one that I love to death because these leaves are just so beautiful. I don't think I had a skin dapsis that had this many leaves on it ever because I've always killed them when they were in pawn or any substrate. But if you guys remember when I potted up all of these propagations, they were in water for probably two years. So, so they obviously took very well. So gorgeous. Root system check really quick. Yes. Okay. And then this is my golden pothos I was telling you about. Oh, this one actually has gold on it. Well, yellow. <laughs> I used to have a huge golden pothos. My mom actually gave me this plant. It was my first plant I ever had, ever. So any pothos you see in my collection is from that. <gasps> Imagine I'm lying. I think I did buy another golden pothos during the course of my plant journey over the past three years, four years. <gasps> I think it's almost, I think it's been four years. Oh my God. I think I did have one more golden pothos. I'm not sure though. It's just been too long, you know? I'm just gonna say this is the one that my mom gave me because she thinks it is. <laughs> so it is. But right now I'm keeping this in a macrame in a window, my kitchen window to be specific, just for aesthetic purposes. But I don't think this plant needs that much light. So I'm probably gonna move it soon. But this one's doing really good in the self-watering pot. It's growing pretty good. I'm just always so tempted to propagate plants once they start getting long. So try to back up and keep my hands off of this one. I already have I think I have quite a few golden pothos propagations going, so I think I can leave this one alone. Look at how full this plant is. I think it needs a repot soon. Yeah, it's constantly needing water. Oh, let me show you the root system because this one, <laughs> look at this one, look at this. Super cool, super established. My only issue and my only question to all of you during this video, how the hell am I gonna get these out? I just feel like this is an issue. This is gonna cause an issue, obviously. And I'm not even as worried about the smaller plants as I am the bigger plants. Ugh, I have to show you guys, or like, I, I need to stop talking about it and show you. I just need to show you how bad this issue is. Oop, I just almost dropped it. Oh my goodness. This is, this can't be good. That can't be good. You can tell that the root is getting squished like to death. Oh my God, no, that's not good. I don't think I'm gonna do self-watering pots for monstera anymore we need me a thumbs up if you think i need to get these out of here before the problem gets worse and if you don't tell me why down in the comments please i mean my monstera elbow though you guys remember what i started with with my elbow look at this look at how gorgeous this plant is i can't believe i actually grew this i used to talk so much shit about my monstera elbow because i paid like 400 something dollars for it just to have like one leaf with variegation on the whole plant which is honestly kind of unheard of now like Monstera elbow for $500 is crazy. Unless it's like a big established... <laughs> Unless it's like a big established plant with some fenestrations on it. Um, excuse me? Like, why was I paying that? Was I on crook? But I can't be that mad because I have like 12 elbow plants right now that have some variegation on them. A lot of them have really good variegation on them, so I really can't be mad anymore. But why did I pay that? That's crazy. That's crazy to me now. Anyways, this is the last leaf that came out and it has one coming out right there and it definitely has variegation on it because I already zoomed in with my eyeballs on it. But yeah, this is so exciting. This is my favorite elbow. I told you guys in my last video that I was gonna post some Monstera elbow in my plant shop on Etsy, Palace of Propagations. And I posted one and it sold out. I wanna make sure the next time I post some elbow in there, I have a few to post. 
And right now I have a few that have like no variegation putting out variegated leaves, which is so exciting. So once I get those a little bit more established, I'll put them in my shop just so that it's more worth your wild. The one that I did sell was so cute though. I'll put it here because I miss it already, honestly. So I just wanted to show you the back of this moss pole before I put this plant back in her little spot because look at how insane it is. I posted a picture of this moss pole on my Instagram story a couple weeks ago. And all of the roots that were white have turned like this different color right here, like brownish. But you can still see it's still pushing through more roots. Need to put some more um, moss in here because it's putting out a new leaf so I know the aerial root's gonna make it in here soon. I cannot wait to see if I get some fenestrations. I wonder which plant is gonna put out fenestrations first. I think it's gonna be this one, but I'm not too sure. I really need to repot this though because this literally keeps me up at night. Like, let's just take one more look. Guys, what do I do about this? Do I take this out now? Do I take this out now? Before it gets worse. Ah! My Hoya pubicalyx, which is in a self-watering pot. It's not typically in this pot, it's in a black pot, but the way it's in the window, I can't get it down without taking the whole curtain rod down. So I just took it out of the self-watering planter from there and put it in this pot to show you, but this is my Hoya pubicalyx, which is usually, well, there's a bug on it, but there's just some sun stress right there. Super cool. Look at all of those super sun stressed leaves. Like, I just took it out of the macrame yesterday, actually, to take a look at the top because I just seen all of this new growth at the top. And I could not believe all of these red leaves. Like, this looks insane. I have another Hoya pubicalyx right here. Is the leaf still red? <gasps> It's not, I guess they're gonna, they don't stay red. Like this one right here was red, but it's green now. I'm not gonna lie, I took it out of a mac, I took it out of the macrame a couple days ago and then I forgot to water it and I just watered it like a few minutes ago. So hopefully it doesn't die, but yeah, it looks like they're trying to make their way out. But like, isn't that an issue? Like, why is it coming out the side and not the bottom? I don't know, but it's kind of worrying me because I feel like all of these plants are doing so good, but when I go to remove them out of the pots, it's going to be so much root damage that it's going to ruin the plant. Or is that not going to happen? You have to let me know, please. I'm begging you. Here's another Monstera Albo. It just put out this cute leaf. It's smaller than the last leaf, which is this one. But nevertheless, it's variegated and it's cute. She's also in a self-watering pot. This is not my favorite setup when the pot is not actually a cover pot. Well, it's a cover pot, but it's not a self-watering pot insert type of pot. So it's just really tight, like the insert pot and the cover pot, there's like no space between them. The roots are getting squished and browning. This is a better example of what the roots are doing. They're literally sticking to the insert, so. I think we only have, <laughs> I literally have two more elbow to show you because that's just what my collection consists of these days. This is the one that's closest to me with the makeshift moss pole. It's majority green and then we got this leaf. This was the last leaf that came out and it's putting out another leaf right there. If you can see, super excited. Can't wait to see what it looks like. And then I'm not sure if you can see the roots because I can't see what you can see right now. But she's growing really well. No roots yet which is good, I should get her out now before it's too late. The other elbow's a little bit further, I'll grab her in a sec. But I think I just showed you guys my micans. I accidentally forgot to water it for a few days. So it looks a little crusty right now. And eh, it doesn't look that crusty. But she's just doing so good in the self-watering setup. She has so many healthy roots down there. I'm super freaking excited. Not excited to repot her and potentially rip those roots off, but I'm very excited because I thought I could never have a philodendron micans in my collection because I killed a couple in the past, but we got one and she's doing good. I'm so excited. This is the other elbow. I think this is the most variegated leaf on the entire plant and there's quite a few leaves on here. There's a little bit on this one. Oh, I remember this leaf. I think I propagated this as one leaf by itself and it, I need to top off the substrate because there's literally roots coming out right there. But I really wanted to check on how it's doing in this pot. Oh. We got a root. This one's a little bit easier because the holes on the bottom, you probably can't see that well and I'm not trying to tip this on myself, but the holes on the bottom are a little bit bigger. Are they though? They're really not that much bigger, but the holes on the sides are. So if they were to come out the sides, I feel like it wouldn't be that bad. But that other pot that I have my elbow in where it's just like slits, 
How are the roots not gonna rip off when I pull them out? There's no way around it. This is my Neon Pothos that's gotten very long. She's so pretty. But I don't really check on her roots that often because she's in a higher spot in the living room. Ew, this looks disgusting. Oh my God. Those don't look good at all, honestly. Like I feel like if I were to wipe them, they would immediately fall off. Disgusting. And last but not least, I wasn't gonna show you this plant because I literally spill it on myself every time because it has these holes. I need to just switch the insert. I have a bunch. I mean, switch the cover pot. But this is my philodendron varicosum that I finally got to grow somewhat decently, although the leaves just recently started yellowing. I can't be bothered to figure out why. But yes, yeah, she's in a self-watering pot. I don't, I don't know if there's any roots coming out the bottom yet. We can check together. Nope, I don't see anything, but I do see some roots in the pot, which is good, even though they're kind of brown, which is scary. <laughs> And then the moss pole. I did root into the moss pole. I'm not sure if you can see because the roots are like the same color as the moss, but she finally rooted into the moss pole. I'm hoping to get bigger leaves, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen with this plant because I don't know. It's just not giving what it needs to give. I think this needs a repot as well. I'll probably put this in the pot that my neon pothos is in, but that was the last plant. Are there any more plants I gotta talk to? I mean, talk to you about? No, that's it. <laughs> Bye, guys.